okay. I've removed now this, the body from the skin to the base of the bill. At the base of the bill, this is again a, a method that we use when we're doing skins and partial skeletons. I'll cut three cuts from the top of the skull into the eye, down across the eye sockets, and then from the base of the bill, one on each side to sever the jaw from the rest of the bill. I'm carefully pulling those apart now, and there's a tongue in there. There are tongue bones which we'll keep with the partial skeleton. I need to grab onto that and remove it. There's the tongue and the partial skull with the skin separated uh, right out to the base of the bill. I'm going to take some of that meat away. I'll set this uh, body aside for just a moment. Make sure that I've got a skin that's going to uh, not soak juices into the, the feathers and gum them up. There's a little fat I'm pulling away. I'll come back to this in a moment. It looks fairly clean. Right now, while the tissues are still cool, indeed they're still cold on this bird, I'm going to take a genetic sample from the carcass and get those into the freezer so the tissue quality remains high. First, however, I'm going to sex the bird Determining a bird's sex involves opening it up from the left side. If you aim uh, to open the bird up on, the, on its left side, so here's the bird's back, head forward, uh, left leg, sex organs go in here, right at the rearmost ribs, and you look for the sex organs where the ribs and the leg actually join together up against the um, dorsal side of the, of the bird. You need to be fairly cautious to not get too much corn cob dust in there. But I'm carefully pulling the intestines away and looking inside. And what we have here is a female. And you can see the um, ovary here. It begins up here, ends down here, and all those little tiny dots are ova. And it's a spring bird, as we knew from its date in March. These ova are enlarging as, in, as compared to these smaller ova down here. Now, we know the sex. What we also do is measure the organs themselves. Uh, birds tend to have only one uh, ovum. They'll have two testes. I mean, sorry, only one ovary. They'll have two testes. And uh, in bird, most birds have that single ovary on the left side, which is why we go in from the left. So I'll measure the, 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 the length of the ovary. I'll measure its width. It's 18.5 by 4.8. Sorry, 5.8. Thank you. And then I will take uh, tissues so that we have high quality genetic samples from this bird. When we take tissues, we usually take uh, several different types. Uh, heart, liver, and muscle are three uh, common types. For smaller birds, we'll take more. Uh, we put them into small um, cryogenic vials and store them at very low temperatures, usually about minus 80 degrees, minus 70 degrees, or even on liquid nitrogen. We put them in these small, uh, what we call cryo vials, vials that can uh, withstand very cold temperatures. There's half the heart in a vial, half the heart in the other vial. I'll put some liver into that. And this gives us several different protein types as well as uh, the genetics of the animal. These are actually still, they still have ice crystals in them, so we're, we're keeping our tissues at uh, a very high quality by attending to them so quickly during the preparation process. Liver's bloody. Okay, now a little bit of muscle tissue is usually easiest to get from the breast muscle of the bird. This bird is labeled as found dead on the road, uh, but it's in very good condition internally. I'm not finding uh, a great deal of trauma, so uh, it's going to make both a good skin and a good uh, partial skeleton. Okay.
fossil tissue for the second vial. Assures good quality tissues. Two seconds while I chuck the freezer. <laughs> okay, um, back to the skin. We'll, we'll come back to the carcass in a moment when we have the rest of the bones out of that skin. I'm using the corn cob dust uh, right now basically to uh, get the get tissues or get um, uh, moisture that might uh, get itself onto the plumage off of myself and off the tools before I now pick the skin back up again. Okay, we took care of the legs. Uh, one is already in. The other one is with the partial skeleton. We're going to do the wings now. We, pulled, we disarticulated those at the shoulder. Now what we need to do is take them out of the skin itself. Um, in birds, the flight, secondary flight feathers are attached to the ulna. This is the humerus coming to the ulna, and you have to push those away with, with a thumbnail. Uh, you can't pull or it'll rip, so you kind of have to push them away and break them down like that. This wing uh, has all of its bones intact, so that's a good quality uh, element for our partial skeleton. It feels to me as though uh, the same thing is true of the other wing. Again, pushing away those secondaries from the ulna is critical or you'll whip, rip the wing skin. Now, once again, as with the legs, I'm going to make a decision on uh, which wing bones to keep with the partial skeleton, which to keep with the uh, with the skin. Because both wings are whole, that's an easy decision for me to make. I'm going to simply disarticulate the right wing at the wrist, which will give us a complete radius and a complete ulna for the partial skeleton. Carefully disarticulating those. Okay, there. Now that I have the complete right wing, humerus, radius, and ulna, I can be more uh, quick with the left wing. I don't need that radius and ulna for the skeleton and their presence will give us a wing that's fully comparable to historic museum specimens. Now I need to um, support those wings in the final skin and I do that by tying them together with thread. I, use a, I like to use a white button and carpet thread for this purpose. I usually had one pre-threaded. Yes, uh, my mom taught me to sew. I don't think she knew that I would use it so much on things that weren't uh, apparel. But uh, I tie a knot in the end of that thread. Come on, come on, come on. So that it doesn't slip free. And then I put a loop into the, I actually use the inside of that wing uh, so that I don't disrupt the flight feathers in the final skin. Now the distance to tie these apart is important and what we do is we look at our carcass as a model and the between wing distance is about an inch. I go one and two thirds from wrist to wrist and um, I'll actually do that here. instead of sometimes you can tie the knot onto the um, the bones remaining there as well this will work fine for a small bird like this I should say for a moderate sized bird bring those together to be about as far as they are on the carcass and then I'll add two-thirds of that distance just by pulling a little thread out and then I will um, I'll tie it off around that bone as well just so that doesn't pop 